Hi people of YouTube, Wayne Hackman here, AKA Waxstar. Gonna take this Raspberry Pi Model 4, gonna turn it into a web SDR. Stay tuned. I've been thinking about doing this for a number of months and now seems to be the time. I've got this little new Alec Smart NSDR and it works really well. I've had it connected to my Mac here. I've had it connected to my old Windows PC, but I thought, would it be possible to use a Raspberry Pi and create a web SDR where in theory, if I configure it correctly, I can tune in anywhere in the world and hear what the airways are doing. Now, in a previous video, you'll see that I've got a, a nice little receive antenna and it's not been doing a huge amount. And so what I thought I'd do is connect that little USB uh, SDR, uh, then connect it to the Raspberry Pi and install a really interesting piece of software on it that can turn that Raspberry Pi into a radio receiver, but also sets up web interfaces so that I can log on on any browser, anywhere on my private network and potentially anywhere in the world to listen to what the airwaves are doing. So let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is download the image file by simply searching OpenWebRx into Google uh, along with the word Raspberry Pi. One of the first hits you'll come across is this OpenWebRx page where you can download the latest OpenWebRx uh, Raspberry Pi image. Now a lot of you already know how to do this, but I'm using a Mac and I'm going to quickly show you how to put that image onto an SD card. Open Raspberry Pi Imager, which is my preferred program of choice. Navigate to wherever you have downloaded that image file. The next thing you need to do is to find a suitable SD card. And I have got a 16 gig SD card. Click on that storage device. And then by simply clicking on right, Raspberry Pi Imager will install that image onto the SD card ready for your Raspberry Pi to load up for first boot. Obviously this method is Mac specific but there are equally good programs for Linux and Windows which will enable you to write that image onto your SD card of choice. Now one quick thing that I would recommend that you do is to set your Raspberry Pi up so that you can remote log into it. And you simply need to do this by creating a file called SSH in text editor, no extension, completely empty, and dropping it onto the boot section of that SD card. Once you've done that, you can assemble everything together and switch the Raspberry Pi on for first boot. Now, when the Raspberry Pi has booted up, you're going to need to find out the IP address that your local network has set up for it. And in my case, I use something called LANSCAN, a piece of software that scans the local network to find out all of the devices. And it has assigned this 192.168.05. So now I can go to terminal and I can SSH into it using the Pi at the IP address. And then when it asks for a password, which in this case is Raspberry Raspberry, it will take you into a terminal login. Now, I advise you to change the terminal password, but it's also important that you create a user. Now, going back to the Open Web RX website, there is a huge amount of documentation. And in this case, we're going to create a user. So I've clicked on the user management here and you can see the commands to create a user for that web administration. And so what you need to do is copy and paste that command into the terminal replace the username with the username that you want in this case I'm going to use radio assign it with the password that you want and then you are ready to go back over to your web browser type in the IP address of that Raspberry Pi and Bob's your uncle you are opening up the web page it has created for Open Web RX. Start that and you are able to start listening. 
Okay, so I've moved over to my Windows laptop here. This is an old Windows laptop, probably close to seven or eight years old. I just use this for all my digital radio work, running uh, WSJT uh, and a few other ham radio deluxe does all my logbook. But I just wanted to use this to show you that once you know the IP address of your SDR, you're able to go into a browser. And I've tested this on this Windows device, on Safari. I've tested this on an Android tablet and also a Apple iPhone. And this all works. And it brings you to this Open Web RX online page that you can manipulate and by clicking simply clicking on start you now have uh, access to all that the SDR has to offer now before i go into what you're able to do with the open web interface if you click on the settings and use the username and the password that you set up you're able to go in and manipulate the settings now i've already set up this station you can see this is my call sign you can see the location my altitude and you're able to do that quite simply under the general settings uh, set a map up even configure the images that are displayed which i haven't done yet if i wanted to make this public facing which i will eventually and i'll let you know when i do that if you go back to the settings, the other really useful thing is you can edit any bookmarks, things that you've set, uh, talk about spotting and reporting. So this is quite useful uh, for any uh, reporter settings, particularly uh, if you use WSPR. Uh, I've, I've enabled that there and people can, that will report to WS, uh, WSPR net to enable anybody to, to, to see if my station can hear them. Uh, but the, the real section that you'll, you'll find useful is the SDR device and profiles. And you can see that by default, this has three different SDR receivers already set up. You've got SDR Play, the AirSpy HF Plus, um, and they already have some profiles. I've actually disabled those. And the one that I'm using is RTL SDR, the USB 6. And it actually comes with two profiles already pre-programmed, the 70 meter, sorry, 70 centimeters and the two meters. But I've also configured a whole other set of listening bands. Uh, you can see that I've got the FM range set up here. You can see I'm fiddling around with the air band. But I also wanted to see how low this particular SDR, USB SDR, can go. And, and I actually got this to go right down to 12 meters, which is, you know, the upper section of uh, the HF band. Now, I can buy an additional little box, which hopefully I will do at some point in the next few months, that will enable me to set up profiles for even lower, which I will do at some point uh, and um, hopefully make this public facing so that you can tune in to my web SDR for, from wherever you are in the world and listen to see if you know you can transmit and listen to see if my web SDR can pick up your transmission so what does it look like on the actual front end well when you first log in you get a little control panel there with the frequencies that you're monitoring, uh, the different bands that you can deal with. There's a few other bits and pieces that can manipulate how the waterfall works. You can also see that there is the usage and clients and uh, uh, server CPU. And you can see on the Raspberry Pi, I'm only using about 23, 25% of its CPU power. Uh, you can see that the buffer is is happily working away, but you can change the the buffer quite easily in in settings, and you can see the the quality of the audio stream. And again, you can change that as well if you're using this on a perhaps a lesser powerful Raspberry Pi or computer. 
What I like about this is uh, actually even in the heading section here where the frequency is, you can see that they've actually given you some already presets, which is part of the Open Web RX. And what I found quite interesting here, if you go here, you can see all of the presets that I've set up for this. Let's let's go, for example, to the 12 meter. And you can see the 12 meter popping up. You can see the waterfall populating there. And you can see I, I've preset it up a sideband. Now, if I um, just um, zoom in a little bit, you'll notice that these little green tabs appear. What I find quite interesting is if I click on the FD8 here, and the same with these other ones, but in particular for the FD8, what that does is just changes the settings here, turned it to digital mode, upper sideband, obviously. And what's great about this is as this waterfall populates, if there's any FD8 signals out there, it will actually decode it and tell you where that station is. Now, this web SDR can't transmit, but if you're, you just want to tune in quickly to see if there's any FD8, tra tra FD8 traffic out there, you can quite simply do that. Let's go to 10 meters and see if we can um, see find any, anything interesting there. A little bit of fiddling around on the 10 meter band. We've managed to hone in on some FD8 signal. What I like about this is if you set up the presets within ham radio bands, it automatically populates the digital modes at the top so that you don't have to spend time honing in on that frequency and specifically setting up the receiver. Just by simply clicking on the FT8 tab here, as you can see, opens up a little window within the web browser and it starts to decode the FT8 transmissions it's receiving which is really useful because I could set up this web SDR being public facing and someone like you could listen into my web SDR and see if your FT8 signal is getting out there. What's also great about this is it reports to various other digital modes. In my case, I've set this up for the WSPR network and it is listening on the frequencies it's able to connect to and transmitting to the WSPR network and reporting anything that it hears. So this little web SDR in its online state, if I'm not using it, is actually helping the ham radio community to see what propagation is doing. Look, the presets can be set up for you to listen to anything that you would like. I haven't purposely played any of the FM broadcasts through this for obvious reasons. If there's music playing, I don't want to get a digital music strike on my YouTube channel. But in theory, it is possible that you could set this up, configure it so that you can log into it anywhere in the world, and you can listen to your home broadcast FM stations that your web SDR is picking up. So it's a useful way to listen to local radio wherever you are in the world. Look, the world is its oyster. Open Web RX is a great platform to use on a Raspberry Pi. And hopefully this first look of how I set this up and what it is capable of maybe has even inspired you to set up your own Open Web RX SDR. In the future, I'm looking to introduce the lower HF band and also make this public facing so that you, if you want to, can log in to my SDR and have a little listen to see if your signal's getting out there. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Please do all of the things that online people do, rate and subscribe, and I look forward to bringing to you very soon another exciting video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.